are you interested in the personal journey of a chess grandmaster, past Australian champion, and high performance coach? As I set the challenge of trying to achieve more in 2024 than all previous years of my life combined? If so, then you've come to the right place. Hey everybody, I'm Grandmaster Max Illingworth, and this is going to be a bit of a reflection on how 2024 has gone for me so far. It's been one where, as I saw mentioning in one of my posts before, that actually this has been a bit of a slow start to me for 2024. Part of the reason for that is I've really been pushing myself very hard in the last weeks of 2023. And when I woke up on January the 1st, I sort of felt just very, very drained. Like I'd slept seven hours, but I felt like I'd only slept three hours, in fact. One thing that's kind of been helping me quite a bit to sort of continue sort of working effectively has been to be meditating basically each day. So doing a little bit of a meditation with the binaural beats music as soon as I wake up. I've also found in the times where my brain was getting very tired from, you know, putting in a lot of work and not having, let's say, long enough strategic breaks, I would also use the meditation as an opportunity to kind of refresh myself in that way. And it's sort of interesting, yeah, to see how things are kind of gone, like realizing those early signs of burnout on the 1st of January. That's why on that Sunday, I did take that opportunity to, well, Sunday was a Monday. Actually, it was a Monday. Yeah, right, losing track of the, of the days here. Um, but yeah, on that Monday, I realized, okay, what is my dream lifestyle look like? And at that time, my answer was, okay, it's to have, you know, the freedom where I'm not worrying at all about money and can do basically whatever I kind of want, which to my mind is, you know, to be going and like playing your know, different poker tournaments each day. But then I thought, well, let's actually test this theory. You know, am I like, and actually play a couple of these events for a whole day and decide, okay, is this actually what we really want to do and you know I have to say even though my the results weren't sort of what I was hoping for in the end like I did really enjoy that experience I also got to build a much closer friendship with one of my poker friends you know talk to him a lot which was uh, was really nice and you know, he gave a lot of very valuable feedback on my game as well it kind of just was a moment where you realize that you know you're you know nowhere near as good at the game as you actually think you are and so that was kind of a moment a bit of readjustment for myself mentally over the last couple of days. It's kind of that realization, you know, you can sort of have everything in life, but you can't always have everything at the same time. And it's sort of something I've been kind of grappling with, you know, with this, let's say, thing of having, you know, the goal of being a world-class coach, of being a world-class writer, and being world-class in exploitative poker. I kind of start to realize that if I tried to work on all three of these things at the same time, that I would most likely just do all of them quite poorly. And so that's why I'm kind of basically to giving a bit of a break from like my poker study and focusing more on the chess aspects that are sort of going to bring in, you know, income that's like very clearly within my control in that respect with the effort that I put in. Uh, whereas with poker, obviously there's a lot more variance in the, in the process as such, uh, regardless of skill. Um, and yeah, also like another thing I've been kind of focusing on a bit more for this year is sort of really sort of trying to build up a good financial system of, you know, being able to, so I'm not just like build up my expenses, but have a really clear plan of like what exactly am I working towards. Uh, that's where some of the goals I set mentioned in some of my previous videos, like the passive income and the net worth goal really come into to play as such. And so I sort of actually had a period of like quite big frustration where sort of like my wife was really wanting me to create some like really detailed plans and budgets and all this. And I just didn't really see like the point of it, you know, when I have like so little in the account like to actually work with, like it's much more important to bring in that sort of revenue really quickly rather than to, you know, try to shave off like a few cents here and there as such, you know, really focusing on the big picture, right? The prayer principle, 80% of results from the top 20% of outputs. And, you know, also another thing that kind of really helped me, I think, like I definitely, I've been going on quite a few walks. I've been getting quite a bit of exercise in, you know, I did go for two walks today and, you know, I've also been kind of not sleeping 12 hours anymore and having a bit more balance there. It's definitely in that aspect of health and wellness, there is some progress, but the sort of kind of burnout and heavy stress I was feeling, like also like today as well, of like some very heated emotions. You know, as a case where like I kind of thought I just had to eat that unhealthy food because otherwise like I was just at that point of just snapping. Like I've been in that situation where, like where one up years ago, like I was driven, you know, by my family, like to such a 
point of extreme distress by like their psychological manipulation. I actually like end up like breaking my phone outside, which is like the so it's completely not my character. Like I never like break stuff, but it just sort of came out in that sort of really tough moment in twenty twenty two where just erring in my life was just going wrong at the same time. And, you know, I even had, like, a small version of that moment where I just, like, you know, I didn't grab my phone. Like, I was had enough control not to do that. But it's like, you know, just, yeah, had to, like, let it out physically, you know. I just couldn't hold in, like, the frustration and, the like, the desperation and the confusion all at once at the same time. It was very kind of overwhelming. Fortunately, I was able to kind of take another break and kind of get through that and sort of start to, you know, be in this state now, like, where I sort of took that time I kind of like set the boundaries I needed to set for myself even when it was uncomfortable even when people close to me didn't understand them I still made sure to prioritize those boundaries first and like that in itself is a big win because this is a a long game I'm taking right like this is a whole year you know to transform every aspect of my life like by at least 10x as such and that's something you know that you know it's not just you can't just make small change it really requires a a lot of big changes over time as such. And what I realized that I also kind of shared with some of my, uh, into all my circles as well, is of this idea that, you know, you really need to pace yourself. Like this is a marathon, not a sprint this year of our uh, 2024. Um, so yeah, also another thing I've kind of done is also, again, I guess realizing, you know, when I'm not in a position to do something, kind of allowing myself to get back into that state. Because one of the goals I've set for myself is that constant feeling of deep engagement. And so when I recognize that I'm really disengaged, one thing I've learned is to kind of step back and, you know, go for those routines, get back into a good engagement. Whether that's as simple as just having a sip of water, just rehydrating, you know, whether that's realizing, okay, I'm hungry, I need to nourish myself. Whether that's, you know, more physical sort of nourishment, like going out, getting some exercise, like going for a walk around the block. Or whether that's, you know, just doing that meditation and, or even just like taking that space. I just like say, you know, I don't have to work 60 hours a day. I can take this space and do nothing. And again, just kind of pace myself by having that relaxation time. And, you know, it's sort of thing, like I've also kind of realized how important it is to have like sort of people there kind of for you. You can sort of bounce ideas off, sort of share the journey. You know, it's one reason why I have been like putting out a lot more content lately is the way not just like from, let's say, a business point of view, but also from a personal point of view that, you know, opportunity to explain things to other people helps me to really learn it more deeply and apply it for myself and also provide a lot of value for you guys as well who may be, uh, you know, going through some challenges like, okay, 2024 hasn't started the way I wanted or, you know, my goals feel sort of so overwhelming at the moment. You know, I went through that that feeling as well, you know, last, uh, last night, absolutely. Um, but what I want to do is kind of just want to share also sort of some of the steps forward. Um, one thing I'm really happy that I did today is I actually went through the first hour of Undercover Billionaire of season three. You know, I went through seasons one and two already with, uh, Glenn Stearns and Grant Cardone. I started the one with Monique uh, Idlet. And so one thing I find that really helps when sort of going through these things, like when a really good points for up just to, you know, get it and just like write it down to something that's really been helping. You know, I've kind of been telling my students to do it for some time, but now actually doing it myself is kind of helping me to be a better learner and you know, also a better coach and, you know, best better as, uh, you know, in terms of being able to give more as well. So one thing I've kind of done with, actually not with all of my goals, but with some of them, like I've sort of taken like sort of the path and thought, okay, what's, sort of part of of this and am I sort of up to as it were so uh it's kind of funny like just right now I'm looking at my my document actually of the uh of like the things and it actually occurred to me that you know one thing I can just put you know okay I will do the recording for these videos in February 2024 like even as I'm doing this recording I'm kind of refining my my plans as I go and I think that's a great thing about a flexible plan right you know it gives you it actually gives you more freedom to create that plan where you don't have to fix it doing it a certain way or, you know, having to fit in with someone else has very different values to you. But it's a way where you can just sort of make it work based on what you actually need and the feedback that you're actually getting in that moment. Uh, so another example is like sort of for the steps to 200k net worth. Like I'm just really lazy folks on like getting those six coaching program sales through because that's what opens the door for everything else. You know, it's what allows me to 
play the poker tournaments without feeling under financial pressure, like, oh, if I lose one flip, you know, I'm suddenly in a bad situation again. And it also allows me to kind of take those holidays without feeling like, oh, like I don't want to like go into debt. You know, I guess take that holiday and kind of reward myself. You know, I can also provide better experiences for myself and my wife, like going out to somewhat nicer restaurants rather than just like, you know, walking back and forth in uh, my suburb of DY. It also kind of opens the door to be able to invest like in the stock market to get back into that. Because that was something I really, really enjoyed doing back in 2020 and 2021. And it was kind of unfortunate when it wasn't so easy to do that from like late uh, mid 2022 onward. Like it was just the most painful thing in the world when I had to sell my investment portfolio just to kind of bail myself out when things were just going so horribly wrong in my life. Um, So that's going to be like really exciting to get into. And, you know, I really am sort of wanting to, well, it's something that's just really, I'm getting really passionate about really learning more about finances, like the different aspects from, you know, managing your money to, you know, investments to real estate, to learn about different things. You know, some of these things I'm kind of saving to learn, like until I have a little bit more resources to work with, but I kind of see the path of the growth in that respect of new skills. I'm going to add to my skill sets. I'm not just focused on like how much money can I make, but how can I make the most of the resources that I have as such. And right now I'm in that same year, I'm kind of learning okay, I'm trying to find ways to be resourceful with limited resources. And, you know, that's kind of an interesting challenge in itself, right? Um, and also kind of opens the doorway, you know, having those six private students, it also provides that room, like, to upgrade that group coaching program and realize that dream that I'd start in 2022. You know, it took a lot of time and a lot of, like, work, like, both internally and, you know, with a psychologist to really help me to... Uh, to kind of heal as such, to those wounds to, to sort of heal and to kind of let go of some of the resentment that I felt towards my family from everything that happened where, like, you know, just blaming everyone else. Like, I am was sort of saying to blame them sometimes. It just was a, you know, just not a healthy situation. Like, no one really benefits if no one is taking responsibility. And, and that's really a lot of what this plan is about, just kind of acknowledging this is where I'm at at the moment uh, and this is going to be the next step towards where I ultimately want to get to as such. Uh, so in that respect, yeah, as I sort of mentioned before, I feel quite happy with my exercise, my sleep. I think I've actually made some pretty big progress there, but I do think like the diet's going to be next level, like find those ways to regulate myself and my emotions so that I don't feel like I have to eat as soon as some extremely stressful situation comes up. I think if I can get back on that track, it's going to really help me to feel a lot better because you know, it was up earlier in December when I lost like two kilos in one to two weeks. That was like really motivating. Like it felt like I'd lost a lot more weight actually, just from that feeling of, of progress and like having those little wins, like it does add up and it does build momentum. Like it really has that kind of compounding effect, you know, by the way, if you are enjoying this video, do make sure to like and consider subscribing. Normally I say at the start, I was getting really absorbed in this journey. Like this really is, you know, primarily a personal thing, but you also want to make sure, you know, that you, like, if you're getting a lot of value with this, that you continue to get that value, right? So another element as well, like on that deep engagement, the step I'm at right now was with the meditation, where I'm kind of, something I may be doing a little bit differently is rather than just trying to rush through the steps as quickly as possible, I kind of want to take a step and get to that point where it's just very habitual, where I'm just doing it without even really thinking about it. And I think that with the meditation, like I'm sort of happy to take that bit more time to get to that sort of 20 minutes of meditation each day, where it sort of becomes easy. And then sort of like add the next little layer on top of it as such. Um, and not sort of feel sort of give into that temptation to try to do absolutely everything at once. That being said, the next step forward and one that I'm really kind of excited about is just having that block time for that intense focus. And that's something I'm still figuring out what's kind of that optimal time for me. Because one thing I've found is, like, my sleep times are still not 100% consistent. Uh, like, I went to bed at, I think, I woke up at 11 uh, a.m. On, uh, on Sunday. And I woke up at, I think, 10 a.m. today. It's kind of funny, because normally it goes the other way around. But this time it's, like, actually, you know, making some progress in that respect. Uh, but, yeah, basically you're sort of saying, well, this is something I have to look forward to, kind of, as a reward for achieving the previous step, if it makes sense. You know, treating, like, levels in a in a video game, as it were. Um, and also another thing as well, like this is something that 
I'm actually kind of thinking of because this is going to apply after I do this video. I've kind of been putting off some conversations for a day or two just so I wouldn't get overwhelmed. So I'd be able to give a really high quality reply showing like I really listened to what they were saying and understood what they were saying, like even just beyond the raw words, but, you know, reading out meaning between the lines as well. I've kind of done that by taking that sort of this little bit of a break for a day or two, not pushing quite as hard. But something that's really important to me moving forward is setting that intention before every conversation. Like, what is it that I want to bring to this, uh, you know, not just in terms of, like, value, but, like, you know, the energy, the presence, all that sort of thing. Um, and, yeah, there's a few other things I've put as well. But the sort of thing as well for moving on to, like, some of the specific skills I'm looking to master, sort of one thing I've done is actually... Because sort of near the end of last year, I sort of had these books sort of in a pile, but I wasn't really going for them. Like, having that pile maybe felt a little bit overwhelming to me. So what I did was, like, I gra- went to the garage, I grabbed a book, High Performance Habits is going to really help me to be a much better coach and, you know, live a much better life, you know, have much more greater happiness and fulfillment on this journey as such, as well as the better results. So I actually have got that book and, you know, my plan originally was to read chapter one today, but then a lot of kind of stressful things came up that I needed to sort of decompress from. So what I'll do is I'll probably like start reading it at maybe, you know, 11, 30, 12, like just sort of as a way to kind of help myself get to sort of sleepy, like just turn the laptop off around midnight, read it for like an hour and then just go to bed. And I think that's something that's going to be quite powerful in a way to, you know, kill two birds with, uh, with one stone. Um, and the thing great thing about that is like, once I've got through that book, like it's also, okay, now I can unlock the next level. Like what's the next thing I can kind of go through. And I think a great thing as well is like, I've been sort of relying on mostly reading articles in the last week. An article is definitely great for getting that little bit of information, like in a short period of time, that little bit of key specific stuff. I've also recently been reading a lot of book summaries. I find that's a really great way to, again, Pareto style, like compress that, you know, 10, 20% of that key information like get rid of the 80 percent of the filler and the stories and just get to the really key practical steps that's something that i've been finding to be quite effective but i was fine because you're sort of processing so much without the story sometimes it takes a bit of time to that to sink in as well it's like i try not to overdo it try like take that one book summary and then try like apply that in sort of my content in different areas of my life for a day or two and then kind of move on to the next thing from there as such um but one thing i can really look forward to after going for this book is I can then also look not just at, let's say, the different coaching techniques aspect, which is sort of where high performance habits comes in, like helping me to ask better questions, to understand better the fulcrum of success so that I can model it and adapt it for chess. But also it unlocks the opportunity to then focus more on delivery techniques. You know, it's nothing I like doing at these videos, you know, I can practice different, you know, techniques that I talk about in Toastmasters, like the pitch, you know, and the tone of voice and uh, you know many other techniques that are not coming to my mind right this moment uh, which is why I need to study it as soon as possible but that's something I'm definitely I'm really looking forward to diving into and really becoming a master of my craft in that respect um, like I'm not doing it you know for engagement reasons although it is true it will make the students more engaged but I'm doing it, like just my own growth and to be able to help people in a in a much better way because um, like you know it's like for example like if you compare you know, the Gotham chess video from like today from, you know, three years ago, you can tell like how much effort he's put into, you know, these delivery skills, like into his craft as such. And that's the level of respect you know, I'm bringing to the work that I do as well in that respect. It's also kind of on the note of the world-class writer. What I'm doing is basically mainly focusing on publishing a new article every day. Um, yes, I took a little bit of a break. Like I wrote some short content, like just sort of asking some questions and you know, sharing some cool quotes. Um, but for today, I was actually quite proud of what I created because I was feeling quite stressed before. I was feeling quite a big sort of writer's block. And then I just sort of, you know, had chat GPT open. It was like, we have writer's block, just go to chat GPT. Uh, but seriously, no, I basically just thought, okay, what would be a good question I would ask chat GPT if I was trying to improve my chess and I didn't really know where to start? And then I just thought, you know, what are the 10 biggest challenges that chess improvers face? I mean, I was doing this a little bit for marketing as well, admittedly. Like, I was very curious what what it would say. But, like, gave me this really great thing. And I thought, wow, like, this is, like, a really good post if I, you know, adapt it and kind of make it my own, like, you know, infuse my own experiences, like, expand on it, you know, from my own coaching experiences and, and challenges and, 
you know, offer some partial solutions as well. And it's kind of interesting, like, when I write this sort of content, like, I sort of, it gets me more excited about coaching, actually. Like, I'm already pretty excited about it, but I get even more attuned with, like, how important coaching is, you know, not just, you know, with chess, private chess coaching, but just, like, as a overall industry, where you sort of, you know, are talking about these different challenges or, you know, these different situations, and you just realize that, you know, there's a different solution to each of those given problems is such a unique solution, but coaching kind of encompasses nearly all of the solutions in one fell swoop. Like, it's not that when you read it, like, some single person might think, oh, he's just doing this to market his coaching, but it's really generally just comes from, like, oh, I see how this connects to coaching, I see how that connects to coaching, and just sort of putting that all together is really something I find very rewarding to do as such. Kind of just reminding myself, I you probably notice a theme for this video, right? Me just constantly reminding myself of why this matters, why this is important. And actually, it's something I also did, uh, kind of tying back a little bit to sort of, let's say, the kind of mindset behind, you know, behind success. Like, I actually read through my entire plan. Like, I was feeling like I don't, I had this sort of overwhelming feeling of like, I don't know what to do. I don't know where I'm going. And then I thought, okay, let's go back to the plan. And it was actually really empowering for me to read you know, some of the mindset mantras that I had sort of come up with of my own accord, uh, like some of the ones that were really making a big impression on me today was, uh, like, basically, it feels amazing to stretch my muscles and push past initial discomfort, because it allowed me to sort of take that more objective step back, a more detached perspective, if you like, and to realize that, okay, like, I'm, it's not just stretching your physical muscles, which I was thinking by okay, like, I'm facing challenges, this means I'm stretching my mental muscles, it's helping me realize, okay, like, discomfort is going to be part of the journey, it's not something that we should fear, but we should actually welcome as a sign of continued growth and actually a progress as we start to encounter, you know, more difficult challenges. Again, using the video game metaphor of, you know, we got past level three, so now we're at level four, like, we kind of earned the right to face those greater challenges, because we showed life that, we're ready to face them and ready to ultimately overcome them. Uh, some other ones as well, like I really made impression for me was sort of realizing that meditation is my me time. And well, I'll actually read the full thing. I think this one's quite powerful. Like for those of you who maybe have been thinking, Oh, I should get into meditation and maybe have not continued to have it or not even started. I put here, it's where I cleanse my mind and let go of the chains holding me down. I mean, every time I read that, I, I can't help but smile. It feels so, like, so relieving. Like, it's such a, a great psychological release to even just imagine that, let alone experience it. Uh, also, another one I'd sort of, I'd kind of had forgotten about is when I had an epi have an epiphany or discover a new perspective, I merely ask myself, how can I use this right away? This video is actually an example. Like, I just watched Undercover Billionaire, had a lot of ideas flowing in my head, and I just wanted to, you know, get it down and to you know, practice speaking it and sharing it with you guys, because I think there's a lot of, definitely, like, a lot of, like, little insights, you know, that can actually make a pretty big impact when you apply them. Um, another one as well is full engagement is the pinnacle of human experience. This actually become one of my favorite quotes, and I'm probably biased because I, I came up with the quote myself, but it's one that I think is just so, so great, because it means you realize that you're not living from your best self when you have that disengagement. It just helps you to stay much more focused on what it is you're doing and to, uh, you know, to cherish that and be grateful for it as well. And also I've kind of put one that's, it's not interesting because actually Monique and Undercover Billionaire sort of made this point as well. Um, I've got the exact wording as of the idea that every interaction is important. I kind of word that in my own way with you can learn something from anyone, but you'll learn more relevant things from those who have already got to where you want to be. So again, like putting in your own words is such a great way, I think, to really uh, channel that uh, and to just really absorb the lessons. And also this idea of like mentors being a shortcut to success, like that's something as well that it's kind of making you realize, okay, once I get that first sort of coaching set, I know the next step for me is to like find that extra mentor that can take me to a higher level in what I'm doing. And, you know, it's something I'm going to allow that process to come and to, you know, get that to a positive influence in my life, get that support that let's say my family is not, doesn't have the skill set off me so clearly from the business perspective. 
just having like someone I can bounce ideas off and you know get advice and learn from experience is going to be immensely valuable. Um, and the other one as well was when you find yourself psych explain why you can't do something, pattern interrupt and ask how can I do it. Um, and yeah, that's I think a, a pretty good note actually to to conclude on. I mean, I've sort of shared you know where I'm at right now, what things I'm working towards, and kind of my overall mindset on this journey. Anyway, I hope they enjoyed this more personal touch and, you know, got some takeaways, you know, to extend beyond the chessboard, as it were. Um, actually, comment below uh, what's going to be a, a good question for you guys. Uh, okay, let's... I'll get you guys to comment with this. What's an insight that really made an impression on you uh, from this uh, this video? Um Okay, you could also, like, write about your own experiences, you know, and be a little bit more vulnerable. That's something I'm kind of working on as well, you know, to kind of, you know, open up a bit more and, you know, not be afraid to sometimes intelligently disagree with people. Uh, but that's maybe a topic for a, a later video. Uh, anyway, hope that you really enjoyed this one, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care.